This isn't a tutorial, obviously, because I've no idea what I'm doing. I'm learning and uh, trying to maybe give a, a bit of a peek into just how I bumbled through with this amazing software called Houdini to to make uh, the video for lo uh, Long Down. I started with a couple of models, uh, which I I found on Wire we, Wire Wheels Club, which I don't know how many sites like this there are out there, but I highly recommend checking it out if you if you're just looking for a, a model, a car model to experiment with. I I thought they were so well made, so well done, loads of detail, um, and I'm certainly not. Uh, a, mo a 3D modeler, so this gave me a, a, a jumping off point. Right, so um, separating out all the uh, all the individual parts is relatively straightforward. You you select them, make different groups from them, and name them. Naming turns out to be really important, and then all of this I'm sure could have been done way more uh, economically and procedurally if I knew what I was doing but like I said I don't so this is kind of a, a very logical way I approached it uh, separated out the body to begin with with a view to trying to make some sort of skeleton from it and uh, uh, breaking down the polygon surface uh, into into a wire frame uh, running along uh, the lines of the the triangles then um, from these from these lines uh, making joins uh, j little little networks between the lines that could form uh, thicker more sort of organic uh, pathways which kind of look skeletal to me turning that into a VDB which is like a volume representation of of the lines uh, which already kind of give a sort of a bone effect uh, and then converting that back into into uh, polygons again for for more processing and being able to then put you know attach materials and the idea was to make it a little bit bigger than the actual body of the car and then surround the body of the car with this and give the body a sort of a transparent material later on so you could sort of see through both um, so then I I took the wheels and I tried to to see what interesting um, things could be done with with that by manipulating uh, things that were like uh, with extrusion for example with separating out uh, different parts of the of the mesh um, into different patterns and uh, extruding them in different ways and there were some pretty cool results I thought might have been better for a different style of car that I was going for unfortunately but that's one of the interesting things about this and it's very similar with music too is you often stumble across an idea that actually doesn't it, it is better than what you thought it would be but it doesn't fit with uh, what you need for the uh, for the overarching uh, uh, track you're making or piece of whatever it is you're making so you kind of shelf that idea and uh, maybe base a different uh, thing entirely off of that idea later on but for now I just had to sort of go oh, let's put that to one side and go back to a sort of again a more kind of skeletal uh, sort of form so uh, I, I tried sort of smoother options again more sort of similar to what I'd done to the outside body and then uh, position those in the tires for the skeleton itself, I I did want it to to kind of grow out of the mud. I didn't just want it to just appear there. Um, so I found a few really useful tutorials online of different ways to do this. Uh, and one way was to kind of make a kind of a mask uh, with a color attribute. That you, then, you then assign the behavior that you want to that region that's colored so and then you you know you can might kind of move that the threshold of that color around the object and affect that 
with whatever process you have in mind in this case uh, the, the kind of growth of the skeleton I also made various attempts at uh, breaking the glass shattering the glass on the models um, which in isolation would have been probably more straightforward for me but because I needed the glass to also be deforming uh, um, during the collisions as well as uh, shattering during that deformation I, I didn't quite pull it off but you know I tried to make all of these things uh, happen as a sort of a unit so I guess one way to look at it is that everything affects everything else uh, again a lot like in a song you can shape this perfect snare uh, and then you put it in a mix and it isn't convincing because it, it's things react against each other and and that's very much the same here you kind of need to think of everything as um, affecting everything else so MPM stands I think for material point method and the idea is that you sort of break down your uh, your model into what kind of look like grains uh, points which at high enough resolution y you can then affect and process the interesting thing with this is how they interact so you can do exactly what I was talking about before where you might for instance have different uh, properties attached to different qualities of materials like mud and water as described in a lot of great tutorials where yeah you have like an amazing water simulation which you might have done with like a flip solver before um, which but now can interact with a grain solver and and together there they are they do have different sort of constraints and physical properties different sort of uh, physics that hold them together um, in different ways the way uh, the way they might move in the real world but they're also interacting with each other so um, in the same simulation you can have water affect the mud and the mud affect the water and and it just makes for a really beautiful effect that that's really convincing in, in as far as I can tell anyway um, I know of course like there's loads of like strengths and uh, weaknesses to all of this it, it's not like a solution for everything but it does especially like a novice like me it gives me an entry point into into making these sort of holistic simulations that that do have interacting uh, properties and so I found that fascinating and so yeah it's again a process of making a making a, a surface bringing a model into a to a kind of like a volumetric mode make the resolution as high as you can uh, run the, the physics the, the colliders uh, and see how that looks and then you you turn it back into a mesh afterwards and then uh, apply materials etc in this case I've got a few different elements of going on at the same time there are there's liquid there's quite a low resolution grain which I'm going to turn into mud later and, and there's uh, various objects uh, which I've pulled from the car uh, and other places too, just things that look like nuts and bolts and wheels and uh, car rims and whatever and just kind of thrown them at the solver as colliders. Uh, so they're interacting with the grains which are interacting with each other and, and you end up with this, or it, it was amazing that this, this thing, the way it works, it, it looks incredible to me. But yep, yeah, so that's, that's that and that's like the opening shot uh, where you kind of see, oh yeah, and then of course there's, there's also smoke, uh, which I thought was important given the amount of destruction going on and also because I, I love pyro solvers just I could do that all day I could just play with smoke all day long in the same way that I could play with uh, waveforms all day long um, and I can describe that a little bit what it comes down to is making a, a smoke collider so that the 
or rather a smoke emission from the the geometry so the smoke gets emitted from the geometry but it also collides with the geometry and also collides with all the other uh, physics uh, the other solvers going on as well so again like i said it's kind of a, that's when things get at least challenging for me uh, when you start trying to make things both be emitted from and collide with the same objects and other objects interacting with it it all becomes a very sort of interesting puzzle to pull apart um but uh, beautiful uh, to to see in action when it all kind of comes together i'll talk a little bit about the uh, the flip the water simulation uh, which just because I think anyone who knows what they're doing will be able to identify immediately as where I went wrong. Um, and, you know, if I could have found the, the hours and the day to do it again, um, I would have. But um, I was way too deep in by the time I noticed my glaring error, which was really to do with scale. Um, and of course a lack of experience in in fluid simulation in general but if you look at uh at the the fluids uh, in the model it looks it looks great like as it's you know i've got a, a proxy of my car geometry i think it's the alfa romeo going through the the water surface and it looks you know it looks fine but it's only after you you really sort of zoom out and you you render it that you notice that actually uh, a car of that size producing those kinds of uh, those kinds of deformations in water would wouldn't really make sense like that those kinds of uh, those kinds of liquid artifacts would be much more appropriate for a tiny little model car <laughs> so when you look at you know the the actual video you and you see it the car for, it looks like a little toy car because i think of the way that the water just the, the scale of the water is wrong the scale of the the movement of the water is wrong so you know it, it's still very satisfying to watch i think uh just to watch water move that way and to watch it interact with the uh, is just lovely but it's wrong but you know i've got a lot a, a lot to learn obviously